Hello, my name is Alan Kurtlink. I'm a certified developer and authorized trainer with Skeleton Key. This video is the first in our series on using the script debugger tool that comes with FileMaker Pro Advanced. This video takes you on a tour of the interface and demonstrates how you can use it to see the effect of script triggers. To activate script debugger, go under the tools menu and select script debugger. It's important that we have the tool running before we open our file because the script triggers we're interested in seeing will activate as soon as the file is launched. Before we look at the script itself, let's go over the anatomy of the debugger window. The debugger is controlled by the buttons at the top of the window. The first two buttons, Step Over and Step Into, both allow you to step sequentially through your script. The difference is in how they behave when you get to a Perform Script step. The Step Over button will perform the subscript without showing you what happens inside it. The Step Into button takes you inside the subscript so you can see each step run. If you step into a subscript and you want to get back to its parent script without having to watch it perform all the steps, you can hit the third button, Step Out. The fourth button, Set Next Step, allows you to jump to another step anywhere in the current script without performing any of the steps in between. You can tell which step you're currently on by looking at the blue arrow in the left margin. Let me show you an example of how these work. If I step through the open script using the Step Over button, it will perform the Clear Sort Indicator subscript without showing me what happens inside. If I decide that I want to see what's happening in that script, I can use the Set Next Step button to take me back to the top of the current script. This time, I'm going to use the Step Into button so it takes me inside that subscript. Once I'm in the subscript, I may realize that there isn't much going on here and I don't really need to go through each step, so I hit the Step Out button to run the rest of these steps and return me to the parent script. Under the button bar, we see the name of the currently running script and how it was activated. Here, we can see that the current script is called OpenScript and it was activated by the script trigger on first window open. Below the box showing the individual steps in the script, we see the last error that occurred. Zero here means that no errors have occurred yet. We also have a checkbox that allows us to turn on Pause on Error. More on this later. Finally, we have a box showing all the scripts that are active. The script that is currently running is shown in bold. Here we can see that another script named Capture Layout is queued up to run as soon as the current script finishes. Now that we've had our anatomy lesson, let's get back to our script trigger example. You can see that when the file opened, two scripts were launched by two different script triggers. When multiple triggers go off at once, there's a pecking order that determines when they each get to run. On first window open is at the top of that list, so the script it launches, open script, goes first. If we click on the other script in the list, we can see that it was launched by the on layout enter script trigger. So, just by having script debugger open, we can tell when a script is launched by a trigger and which trigger it was. Without script debugger, I might not have known that any scripts ran on startup, or what order they launched in. This concludes our first video on script debugger. In my next video, I'll show you how you can use script debugger to automatically alert you when an error occurs in your script. 